Cuddy. It's been a while. So as as you guys know, I have been in a weird phase. It's been weird. It's been really weird. It's raining outside because it's Britain. Stupid British weather. Or it'll be spring. We can go outside, and then we and then we forget we live in fucking Britain, right? But yeah. But so I've been on this weird, weird phase of eating food that's mundane and. I mean, I made two videos where I ate noodles. I made two videos of eat, just eating noodles. For some reason, 45 people, 40, 42 people, watched me eat ice cream. How sad are you people? Seriously. Sad sacks. Just sitting there, watching me, sitting here like... Right, it's pretty nice. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Right, that's nice. Yeah, you know. Uh, it's pretty weird. You know, I want to go on the roof. You know. <sighs> it's quality house content you've, you've subscribed for. Quality, quality content. You know. Um, but anyway, today... I'm going to do something a little different, because I'm basically playing catch-up. As you guys know, my comic book store just forgot, just didn't collect any any books for the last two months. At least they didn't have any Marvel, so I'm basically playing catch-up for the last two months. And for some reason, they decided, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll put the ones... The ones for this week in the in the in your section but the ones the ones for the two months that we missed that they're, they're gonna they're gonna sprinkle in there i won't tell you when they'll start to sprinkle in there because i haven't yet i gave them a list I gave them a list what they needed to get and it's been it's been how many weeks it's been almost a month and they've only been getting like each week they haven't been been getting the two months that they missed. So is that every every person that is that every customer every customer that has a problem with that? Has that that's that problem? They're just gonna have um a two months worth of gaps, or is it gonna be, or is it a thing that is just just me, is it just me with the two months of gaps? I don't know, but. Yeah, what I've got in front of me, because might as well pick up something. I don't want to do more food, food stuff because it's it's not doing too good. It's not doing too well. Not doing too well. No. So going back to the comic reviews, but I have the latest two issues of Venom. Why did I pick these up when I missed out the whole last, the whole last, like, three issues? That's because the last three issues was an X-Men tie-in, like, crossover thing. And it was only getting half of the story, so I thought, I don't really need to read that to understand what this is. Not really. But, hey, I, I picked them up. And it's a storyline called The Nativity. The Nativity. Right? The Nativity. It's basically the story where Venom goes to the birth of baby Jesus Christ. And, yeah, just eats the baby Jesus Christ. No, it's not, it's not that. It starts off with Liz Allen and she's getting her toenails painted 
but not with not with the nail polish. It's blood. And who's painting their toenails? None other than the son of Venom Carnage. And when we see all of the all of the children of Venom and that's basically the the gist of this the gist of the storyline. Venom is once again pregnant. Is going to be having another having another child. Another another symbiote child. And she, because I'm guessing the Venom is a she because it's having a baby. Um, and Eddie Brock wants to make sure that this one doesn't end up like the rest of them. It doesn't end up evil. So it wants... So the Venom symbiote and Eddie Brock want to take care of this this infantine symbiote. Basically until... Until they can find out a way to... Or they can find a host that is suitable. So we we go away from all of that and we see the shocker and he's he's robbing a bank. The guy that he's robbing isn't isn't scared of him at all. He knows how pathetic the shocker is. And so Venom Venom comes in and Venom has a has a relatively easy time. He throws him in. It's a pretty entertaining action sequence. You know, uh, they they're fighting each other. Shockers, you know, shocking him. Venom. The Venom symbiote is like, no, he he's he's got Sonics. We need to we need to we need to go away. We need to run away. We need to go away, we need to run away, we need to stay away from this. So it, the Venom symbiote leaves, shock is like I won, runs into the street, and then gets hit by a car. Not even joking, he gets hit by a car. Look at that. Fucking pathetic. Like, at least, at least in the film, the shocker was somewhat, like, somewhat threatening. Neri just gets hit by a car. And we then see, like, a flash forward or a, like, a dream sequence that the symbiote is making Eddie see and it's the and it's another Venom symbiote inside like it's another Venom symbiote but it looks kind of weird and I'm guessing this is what the child will end up becoming if it's not raised properly When Liz Allen is looking after it, for some reason, I'm guessing Liz Allen is the, the love interest for, for this, for Eddie Brock, I guess. Because uh, I thought he was, I thought he was in love with the symbiote. I thought, no, never mind, I, I, I don't know, because in the in the Venom movie they're portraying the symbiote as 
as male, even though they're supposed to have like a like a a relationship. They're supposed to have a a sexual relationship. I don't know. But yeah. That's that's what Venom's child will end up looking like if it's not raised properly. And then when Eddie was running away he ends up on a rooftop and he's and he's walking through the street and he comes across this this girl this woman that I don't know the name of I don't know the name of and And she is like catching up with with Eddie up until she pulls out a gun and tries to shoot it. And and we have this this other exciting exciting um, chase sequence where Venom's trying to get away. He's eventually captured and. He's told he's he's gonna be a daddy. And that's cliffhanger number one of one because it's a two part story. And there we go. And then we have issue one hundred and sixty five, which is infinitely better because you know it's got more action. And it's practically all action, more plot, more stuff happens, more stuff go, goes on. And, you know, last issue was set up, this issue's payoff. So yeah, we see that this, this woman is trying to, is trying to say, look, when you left the army, we, we were tracking you ever since. Now we know that the symbiote's pregnant. And we've got to make sure that, that that symbiote ends up in the wrong hand, in the, ends up in the right hands. So whose whose hands do they want it to end up in? None other than the Scorpion Mac Gargan, who had a symbiote before, but some somehow got rid of it. And. somehow got rid of it and then spider woman of all people shows up and she and then there's a, a big fight scene um eddie's still strapped down to this table so it's kind of funny seeing him just just roll around everywhere just not know what's going on and spider Woman's doing all the heavy lifting. And... She's basically just, like, pulling him up the side of a building. Well, that's, that's pretty funny to see. Just that the protagonist is basically made useless throughout the first half of this, this issue. And... Scorpion's like, oh, where did they go? I need that suit. With the suit, it's going to be mine, you know, typical villain stuff. And then Eddie's like, go to find out who told these people, and you need to, you need to have the baby. And so Venom suits up and goes to find the scientist that's been working with him. From the from the start of this series, so we see. So this is the thing that I kind of I in the Venom trailer. What we see is 
the suit kind of wrap around his head that way and the teeth kind of go down that way. I I like that. But here we see they kind of wrap around his face in a different way. Maybe they didn't know how to do the CG for that. Maybe they didn't know how to CG that. And it's kind of easy to draw that. But still. It's just interesting to see the, the, the different ways that Venom's mask or like face kind of wrap or, or wraps around Eddie Brock's face. It's... It's just, it's just weird. It's weird and it's interesting. Uh, that's some of the stuff that I'm, I'm more excited to see in the next run when Ryan Stegman takes over because I love Ryan Stegman and and Donny Cates' writing. Sign me up. I love that book. But yeah, um, we have. Venom basically interrogating the scientist that he's been working with. She's like, and he's like, no, why? Why would I rat you out? You're you're one of you're you're one of my few friends. Like, what? Why? Why on earth would I rat you out? Uh, and then he's like, cool. I guess, I guess you gotta play midwife. So, Mac is in Alchemax, trying to, trying to find Eddie Brock, and, because he, he wants to, he wants to kill him, basically, he wants to kill him and take the suit. So then, while the Venom symbiote is basically having this baby, um, Eddie has to get out of the suit Eddie has to get out of the suit so that it can give birth and and that's when Scorpion that's when Scorpion shows up again to to fight Eddie Brock and the fight is you know it's meh Eddie Brock is like only wearing a pair of trunks and he throws some glass at him and he and Scorpion then throws throws Eddie into like a, a cupboard and just as just as Scorpion's about to get the get the baby or the child or whatever, then the lady from before comes back and just like tases or you know dis dysfunctions um, the Scorpion suit. And as, and while we're going forward, we, we find out that the, that the baby that, um, Venom had was a stillbirth. Okay, that was rude. Yeah. So yeah, the baby was a stillbirth. Right. That was rude. Okay, um... Yeah, basically it's still birth. 
And that's, it's kind of what I don't get. I don't get the... Um, the sentence is still birthed, and then in the next page he's saying, Oh, I'll come to visit the baby. But it's his stillbirth. But he's, he's saying that he'll come visit and, you know, make sure that, make sure it comes out, uh, it, that it all goes okay. And so, so basically, the 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 baby symbiote isn't dead, or is it? I don't I don't know. I don't really know. But yeah, as as we see forward, the ending, the ending is actually really good. Like, because Venom is kind of taking taking the place as the inner monologue. Because like most most comic books, most comic book characters have inner monologues. Like Punisher does it a lot. Spider Man has has it a lot. But yeah, the inner monologue is quite quite important for for a superhero. So, the voice of Venom is taking place of the inner monologue, and it's basically saying, it's basically saying, on the on the last page, understand it doesn't have to, have to just be me and you. This is this is him saying that he understands now. So the, the Eddie Brock is trying to make this Venom symbiote better, but also because. Because it started off being, because neither of the ne neither of the symbiotes now have their hatred towards Peter Parker or towards towards Spider Man anymore. They they're basically good guys. They are full on heroic characters now. And he under he now understands that it doesn't have to just be the two of them anymore. He understands family, how they they can have they can have the the protective like leader. They can have the the outsiders. They can have the black sheep. They can have maybe the the one that's always getting in trouble. So yeah. So I was just reading one of the things from the letter, from the letters page. That's weird. I I like I like the new the new direction that they're taking for Venom. I like that they're making him more heroic. I I always thought that that was a that that was a really interesting like way to go with Venom because he's never really been evil. As such, he's always been kind of like Spider-Man and Peter Parker ruined my life. I need to get revenge on him. But I also, I also need to use the symbiote in a way to protect innocence. But he doesn't see Spider-Man as an innocent he wants to he wants to get rid of spider-man but he wants to protect everyone else he's kind of, he's always been that kind of complex almost anti-hero but he's always seen as a villain because he goes up against the main hero but here he's actually trying to be the full-on hero kind of like a 
kind of like what Jerry Duggan tried to do with Deadpool, where they put him on the Avengers. But here, Venom is just straight up. I don't hate Spider-Man anymore. I'm gonna work with him. I'm gonna fight alongside him. I like I like that. I feel like it's it's the natural next step in his character arc. Like you had Flash Thompson, you had Flash Thompson use the the suit, and he was full on good guy there. And he was full on like hero there. He joined the Guardians of the Galaxy. Then he came back, and the suit went on to this this other guy who was trying to make it evil again. And the suit was like, no, we can't do this. And they they had this internal battle where the the villain was the the guy, not the suit. But in in Flash Thompson's case, it was the suit trying to take over Flash. But Flash had a stronger will and beat out the suit. But the suit, because it was trying to, because it was evil. And then tried to be good again. It because it was evil and it was good at the time, and then it went into someone who wasn't redeemable. Then it it kind of became just, and then it became evil again, and then and then it goes back to Eddie Brock, who was who was. Yeah, not a nice guy, or not the greatest guy, but he was still redeemable. He still could be redeemed. He was still, he still had heroic, he still had a heroic nature about him. The suit just needed to show him that maybe Spider-Man isn't the source of all of your problems. Maybe you need to get over it and start being, you know... The lethal protector again. And I like how he's getting s gradually he's taking one step further to to legitimizing himself as a full-on superhero again. Or now he's he's legitimizing himself as a full-on superhero. I know covers like that don't really help the fact that he's kind of turned over a new leaf or, well, he hasn't really, but he's just, he's just more good than he, he's just less evil than he was, or more good than he was before. Still not perfect, he still occasionally wants to eat someone's brains, but, yeah. He's a, he's a good guy now. But yeah, the whole storyline of him having a baby, having a baby is a stillbirth, but it's not a stillbirth, and... The whole, the whole, I don't want this baby to end out like everyone else because with Carnage, I didn't know what I was doing. With all the others, I that was before I realized I went back to where the Clintal was born and and so on and so forth. So I didn't know how, how it worked. And now we go back, we go back, and he knows all of the ins and outs that Clintal has seen been reminded of how they're supposed to give birth and they they want to make sure that this this symbiote is good from the get-go so yeah <coughs> <coughs> that's been my review of Venom's uh, Venom issue 164 and 165, The Nativity, and it's an okay story arc, it could have, could have used a little bit longer, but apparently they're, they're building up more of this when it goes back to a number one with Donny Cates and Ryan Stegman, and I'm gonna love that book, just because of the creative team. I really love Donny Cates and I really love Ryan Stegman's art. So yeah, I'm super looking forward to that. And I can't wait. So I will be back. Probably not as soon. 
as I hope to be, but I will be back as soon as possible. Sorry that this was a longer video than I usually do. I wanted to keep this around the 20 minute mark, it's got 10 minutes over that. Hopefully that wasn't, that wasn't too long. You guys, I've done longer videos before, so I'll, I'll see you guys next video. See you guys ASAP. Until then, to all I want, peace.